Well, our journey is almost complete. And if you've been here every week, you have, we've been led into some interesting places, haven't we? We've been led to be tempted in the desert and be born again. We've been led beside a well. We've been led to see again. Today we'll be led into the city. Jews from the entire nation would have been traveling to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover with their family, with their friends at the temple. Passover was a tremendous celebration in the life of the nation of Israel. It commemorated their their exodus out of Egypt, their freedom from captivity, and its meaning was literal, Passover. See, Moses had instructed the Hebrew people, you need to, to sacrifice a lamb. And you need to spread the blood over the doorpost. Because the angel of death is coming to Egypt. And all who have the bread, the blood of the lamb spread over the doorpost will be saved. The angel will pass over. Pass over your household. If it's marked by the blood of the lamb. The firstborn would be saved by the blood of the lamb. There were two parades that Palm Sunday morning. Two parades in Jerusalem. The first, the first would have consisted of the Roman army. The praetor, or the person in charge, Pilate. He would have assembled a large faction of the Roman army together. And he would have encouraged them, ride and march into the city. Into the holy city and exhibit great force and great power. These soldiers decked out in their armor and on their mighty war horses with their weapons all in plain view were sending a definite message to the people. It's a reminder who's in charge. And if your little festival gets out of hand, Pilate will close the temple. There will be no Passover celebration. And nothing will save you from the wrath that will ensue. Oh, the Jews would flee and hide from this first entourage. The second, the second parade that day was a simple man on a single coat, colt. The Jewish people, they began spreading their, their cloaks and the palm leaves on, on the ground as he descended down off of the Mount of Olives approaching the golden gate where he would enter the city and approach the temple. All the while, shouts of praise and and adoration. They could be heard yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our great ancestor King David. Hosanna in the highest. But did they know what they were shouting? The literal meaning of Hosanna means means save us, or save now, or rescue us. Did they know what they were shouting? Did they mean it? Were they really crying out for this simple man on a single colt to save them from the mighty Roman army? To have mercy upon them. To save them from the darkness and sin that dwelled in their very hearts. Did they know? Hosanna. Save us now. Oh, what a glorious entrance and celebration it must have been. Children running and laughing and playing and celebrating as the Messiah rode into the holy city. But did they know? No one had any idea what the week would bring, did they? Besides Jesus. Those same people shouting, Save us, Hosanna, on that glorious parade day. Less than a week later would be shouting what? Crucify Him. How could they know? See, Jesus' identity was not rooted in the praises and shouts of the people, nor would it be rooted in their cries of anguish and hatred that would take place later in the week. 
His identity was rooted in his obedience to the Father. And the only voice that mattered to him was the one that told him he was beloved. He was chosen. He was blessed. Make sure your identity is not rooted in the insults or the praises of the crowd, but rather rooted in the voice of your Heavenly Father. Because that's the one that matters. That's the one that matters. Oh, we know what the week brings. We know what the week brings. But today, today we celebrate the triumphant entry of our King into the holy city. And today we will shout our hosannas because we know, we know that He alone can save us. Amen.